trop du mal bizarre. Ok, well, um, welcome everybody. Um, after a small break, uninterrupted by lectures, um, you guys go to study and do lots and lots of things that you enjoy. Um, this is the best lecture. Anybody a plumber in the room? Have we got any plumbers in the room? Okay. Um, just in case I insult the plumbers. But nevertheless, this is a particular part of your tech uh, component. Obviously, sanitary plumbing for residential. I promise not to make any shitty jokes. Uh, or, you know, there's a wee bit of work in this, of course. So it is, uh, what is, you know, what is brown and sticky? Stick. Um, so this is the part of architecture that no one really wants to talk about. Why? Because it's the icky stuff. Okay? We all go through life pretending we don't do poos and wees. And we all take little responsibility for, for it because we go into a little room and we flush the toilet and we walk away. Then you spray and walk away. <laughs> anyway, um, so, but it is an essential thing to, to know. Now, in the architectural world or in the building world, we have wonderful people called plumbers. And plumbers and drain layers, they deal with this stuff all the time, as you can imagine. Plumbers are a bit like an ambulance service, you know? Um, if the shit is pouring out of the wall, you don't really need a plumber straight away. Uh, and it makes a mess. Ironically, when you look at the risk in a building, uh, in terms of your life, for example, you would say the risk of this, burning, this building burning down is quite critical. As an architect, you have to provide very little information. Sorry if I use the term architect. It's not to exclude those in interior design. As a designer, my apologies. Um, it's, in terms of risk, you would suggest that electrical fault, which could burn the building down, would be quite a high risk, and therefore you would need to provide and be certain of all the information being uh, correct. Ironically, we provide very little electrical information to an electrician, other than if you've got a lighting plan, you'll show where the lights and the switches are, uh, you'll show where the switchboard is, you'll show where the, um, where the meter board is, and you'll show where the smoke detectors are, because the council requires that, and they can just be, in a residential situation, they can just be your, you know, $5 smoke detectors from Bunnies. Mm -hmm. So, we don't provide very much work, uh, much information at all, but when it comes to plumbing, you've got to provide lots of information, okay? And um, because I guess if a building leaks or plumbing leaks or something that's not right over a long period of time, the consequences can be quite dire. So we'll go through a few images. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of what they call PowerPoint karaoke today. When I started looking at the material, this is not my material, so um, I'm filling in as, you, as you're aware. Um, you go through it and you go, wow, I could say that differently. Oh, let's just say it the way it is. You know, so if it is a bit of that, do bear with me on that. There's a lot of referencing in this to specific standards. Now, do I know everything about plumbing? No. Do I know where to find it if I need it? Yes. That's your role. Because it's a bit like, I say plumbing's like a drop box for me. Every time I use Dropbox, I have to look up the instructions every time I need to use it. Okay, because I don't use it enough. And same with plumbing as a designer. You don't do it every single day, but you need to know where to go and find this information that you would be looking for. And you kind of need to know the theory about it. It's a bit like structures. Are you a structural engineer? No, but if we've got a beam that big, it's going to be about that big. You know? So that's kind of what you need to know because otherwise you'll design something and the engineer will go, welcome to my that big beam, and you'll go, oh shit, that doesn't fit. Okay? So you need to have that sort of awareness. And I, and I do believe plumbing and drainage, it's not to say do not become an expert in this. It does pay to know. So we'll get through it and hopefully with a bit of gesticulation and ranting, you'll understand a little bit of it. Take it home and go, that was boring. Anyway, here we go. Um, obviously, residential, uh, as a designer in New Zealand, you'll encounter this. This is starting to change, obviously. We're getting into more high-density housing and whatnot. And this is, a, this is an example of where your services are found on the road. Normally, housing in New Zealand, we have water supply, Blue line, uh, and we often have a stormwater line and we also have a sewer line. That's called a town supply for water and it's also called a town system or whatever in terms of your resource, obviously with your stormwater and your sanitary 
the sewer. Okay, so the sanitary, sanitary meaning all your waste material, stormwater, those two things should not mix. If you live in Ponsonby, they might be the same line. Why? Because old fashioned, we used to put it down the same line, and when it rained a lot, all our beaches got polluted. So um, that's so we're hopefully separating those systems. And when you go to lodge a building consent, you will pay a ridiculous amount for the development contribution, and it's supposedly to help with the influence or the impact on your development upon these things, services and whatnot. So, um, obviously this is uh, starting to show some pipe work. It's a very difficult diagram to read. The beauty of computers means you can draw everything and see nothing. So, um, these are the types of things you'll end up um, looking at, obviously. Hydraulic pipe sizes, venting. Venting becomes really important. Uh, access points. No good having a plumbing system you can't fix. Okay. I have a house I built, designed, I didn't build it, somebody else built it 20 years ago. How many times have I had to repair the plumbing in one of the bathrooms? More than I care to count. Fortunately, I have an access panel behind the bathroom that I could get to it, otherwise, I would have ripped the tiles off the wall five times. Right? Well, so, really setting things up so they can be serviced. And generally, your plumbing system can do that. And if something blocks up, you can stick a rod down there and make all the poos go away. All right, so that's generally it. So access point traps. When we use the term traps, we're generally talking about a water trap that allows water to stay in the system. It's usually a wound end. Okay, we'll we show there. one later. But that stops the smells coming out of your, out of your sewer line. All right, it's a straight pipe. What you had last night, we'll be still talking to you. <laughs> okay, so hence we have a U-band, generally called an S-trap or a P-trap. Ah, oh, P-trap, P -trap. Anyway, so some more, this, this is, uh, oops, here's my own technology. So the reference to sanitary plumbing generally is what's inside the house, and drainage uh, is generally what's outside the house. So you have drain layer, he's generally working, he, sorry, that person uh, is generally working outside, and similarly, the plumber is generally working inside. So that's that's part of it. Here is a, a typical sort of array of, of systems, building services within a house. Um, this also demonstrates in purple the stormwater, and what's in green in this particular case are all the pipes that constitute the waste only. Okay, the waste systems within the house. So. Services and I think in two weeks' time we'll be looking at stormwater services just to make your week more exciting. Um, but generally, what's in green here is what you're considering as your sanitary services. Okay, so that's breaking it down. And obviously, there's a couple of words you need to know the word fixture refers to your toilet, that's a plumbing fixture. Okay, it refers to your shower, that's a plumbing fixture. It refers to your sink, that's a plumbing fixture. Okay, so if you use the word fixture, it generally talks to, about those things you kind of bolt in. Even your dishwasher is a plumbing fixture because it discharges waste from that. So when we talk about fixtures, we're talking about your bath, your toilet. Uh, the gully traps are not necessarily glass fixtures. <coughs> toilets, basins, and things like that that you use. Uh, so that is what we're going to focus in on. Uh, those things. So there's a typical array uh, of components so of your sanitary plumbing. So, so again, this is, um, as far as I can make from this diagram, this is our stormwater system here. Um, and you'll see a whole array of pipes. And it's, again, a bit like our water supply, it's kind of easier to work backwards and then go, okay, if that's the sewer outlet, um, then there's a toilet that feeds into it. And then if you note, there's another pipe that goes up here. That's called a vent or a stack. All right. And the reason we have those, and that's what I want to focus in on, the reason we have a vent in that system is because that toilet will have an S trap or a P trap, which is a which is a seal to a water seal that stops the smell coming up. The problem is when you flush that, or some in other systems, another pipe might run past there. There could be a vacuum created in that system, and that would suck the water out of that toilet trap or out of your pipe. And if that happens, then you start to get the smells from the sewer. And that might happen from your sink. You go, whoa, somebody put something down the sink. Okay? And you, you want to avoid that. So the ventilation 
avoids the back vein uh, occurring. So it's the back vein to vent or stack or something like that. But ventilation in general is there to stop that happening. Okay? So it stops the vacuum creating in the system and therefore that will stop the smells coming back through. So like I said, this is the fun part of architecture. So we've got a vent for the main drain. These are some components that you might need to look at. Man, this is the best. Thing. Inspection opening at trap. You'll find that most of these components, and again we'll see some a bit later, they have little caps you can open up on them. So you'll have a pipe and it's got a little cap. And you can turn that and undo that and look down the pipe. Yeah. Alright, but you can stick a rod down and you can flush it up and through. So there's inspection points everywhere nowadays. All days you do. Okay, fixture trap. So the word trap again, each fixture well, most pictures have their own little trap, and that's that little S beam that you see under your sink. That was, that was like that. That, 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 that is a trap. Okay, fixture just to discharge pipes. These are just some components. Fixture vent, right? And this is the fixture itself. <coughs> so we talked a little bit about fixtures. So this is a typical array of uh, components and plumbing, and we'll bring up. Some objects here. Obviously, your fixtures, so your toilet, runs straight into a pipe. Now, just to let you know, and again, we'll cover it a little bit later, there's a bit of repeats in this. So, there's two systems we use in New Zealand, and one is the G13, which is New Zealand Building Code, and the other one is the AS or NZ and AS3500. So, that is what is typically, typically called the Australian system. That tends to be where we're going, and we're using the Australian system wide, uh, uses less gully traps, and we can put lots more fixtures into the system. It works better for them. So you'll find what's termed the Australian system in the industry is, uh, is used more commonly. Um, so a braided stack or a rollover stack, this is generally when you've got a sewer line running through, say if this was a two-story building, for example, or, um, so that's picking up stuff before it actually starts to discharge into the main down here. Okay, so a braided stack or a rollover stack is doing it. So here you can see all these particular components feeding directly into this. Now that happens sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, sometimes you'll find smaller fixtures. Toilets always go straight into, call it a main line. Okay, they don't go through anything else. But say your, your basin, may connect with some other fixtures before it actually discharges into this line. And there's rules around it doing that. Okay? But generally the toilets go straight into the line that in this case goes straight to the sewer and the sewer should be going in that direction. Because you don't want any 90 degree bends if they go down like that, they're okay. But certainly down here on the flat you don't want any 90 degree bends. So this is what they call the exclusion zone. Obviously uh, once you get beyond the building, that's, uh, you don't want anything else getting into that system beyond it. Okay, the stack vent. In the old days, we used to call this a terminal vent, a TV. Okay, that used to, most of you, if you grew up in most suburban housing in New Zealand, you'll have a gully trap outside where the pipes come out, and you'll see your toilet. There'll be a pipe that comes out yeah. of the wall, yeah. and there'll be a stack, a vertical stack above it, and it will go through the roof and sometimes have something like that on. Okay, that's, that's the old fashioned terminal vent. All right, and that was exactly about allowing air into the system so that it doesn't siphon out. Now, the uh, terminal vent, nowadays we have more uh, sort of design liberty with that. So if you wanted to vent, this is a vent pipe here, coming into a little branch pipe. See how that runs through and connects to this. See how this also has a branch pipe and it comes through and connects to this. So this stack vent here, in this particular case, is also servicing that toilet. It's close enough to this toilet to service that one and it's also servicing this fixture here. Okay. In the old days, we had one for each one of those toilets, etc. So there's a bit more flexibility in the system, and also these pipes can be like 50 mils in diameter, depending on the fixture. So, fixture bed. Oh, look at that. Okay, so when it comes to sizing, so there's pipe loading and pipe sizing. So, as a, as a designer, you need to know that. You need to know how big the pipe's going to be what angle it's going to be at, and how much loading it's putting on the system. So again, you, do you have to know all the numbers? No, but you need to know that you need to know that to find that, if that makes any sense. 
So in this particular case, you've got a, um, you know, obviously a toilet, WC, water closet, basins, these two basins, one, two, I think, uh, kitchen sink, <coughs> kitchen sink, and we've got a bath, and we've got a shower, it's a shower box, and it's like the oven. Okay, so <coughs> each one of these fixtures has a loading, so it's called discharge units. And so the term discharge units will come will come out quite a bit. And what discharge units are is a sort of rate of liters per minute. Okay? So each fixture will have its own rate of discharge of liters per minute. So for example, the, the various ones or the different ones, I think uh, a toilet, for example, has a four discharge units. So effectively it's doing about 16 liters per minute as a discharge. But what it is is a measure of the capacity of each one of those fixtures to discharge water, wastewater, and we need to allow for that. Because maybe you have a small little pipe like this and you're loading up the system up here with lots of water, either flushing a toilet, letting a sink go, or having a shower, and the system can't handle it. So if you don't, if you remember one thing, you can start early. If it starts small, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. That's your pipes. Alright? <coughs> Never do your pipes get smaller. Right. Okay, otherwise something's going to block up. Right. So always your smallest will be at the fixture and your largest will be at the outlet, which is generally your sewer line. I still don't see nothing there. Oh, so it's just the water supply. The next one here. So this is again what we've been talking about. We've got discharge units. Again, discharge units is the capacity or is a measure of the liters per minute flow rate of a fixture. So when you flush a toilet, so much water per minute goes out of that. As a, as a generalization. So if you look at something like, uh, what do we use uh, a lot? Kitchen sink. It has three discharge units. And next to it, it will say minimum trap and discharge pipe diameter. Okay. Right. So if you're putting in a kitchen sink, discharge units, this is the minimum size. This is commercial. There's domestic one, single or double with or without a waste disposal unit, three discharge units, 40 mil minimum pipe size. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. When you look at that, as a designer, you go, okay, I need to allow for a 40 mil pipe. Certainly a plumber can see And you need to look at that and go, that's a 40 mil pipe. Well done, Mr. Plumber. Get it thick. Okay, shower, two discharge units, 40 mil uh, pipe size. Uh, urinals, disgusting things. Um, 50 mil pipe size. Water closet pan, four discharge units, 80 millimeter pipe size. Okay. Now, there are overriding rules on water closets. I think you can only use an 80 mil if you've got one water closet. If you've got two, you have to be at a So there's different overriding uh, rules. Then you've got a bathroom group. Okay. So this is bath, shower, basin, and B day in one compartment. All right, and they just the BB, collect the buys and they have into a single yeah, number, and you've got all those components yeah, in the room. So you can imagine a hotel would be lots and lots of these right now. There's a French thing. They call it a bathroom and roof, yeah. and they give it a particular discharge unit. And what will happen in that case, they'll use what they call a floor waste gully. So if you've ever been in a room, then you'll see there's a grill in the floor. So if something overflows, the water goes in there. It's a really good idea. Okay, that's a floor waste gully, and in New Zealand, we didn't use them very much until recently. And if the bath overflowed, so did your house. All right, if the toilet overflowed, the dog. Okay, um, or if the sink overflowed, sinks are supposed to have things. These floor waste gullies picked up the water of the overflow and the water ran away. Similarly, nowadays we have a wet room, like the disabled access. Effectively, the waste in the middle of that wet room is a floor waste gully. Okay. The difficulty with a floor waste gully that's not a wet room is sometimes they evaporate okay because you don't use them much because obviously you're not pouring water over your floor very often okay and the trap the seal the water seal <coughs> can evaporate and make it start to smell so to combat that in new zealand if you have a floor waste gully you have to feed another fixture say the sink the sink goes into that to keep it charged so the water from the sink will flow through that fixture or that waste to exit the building don't get too worried about it Okay, so utilizing all of these things, we'll go to this plan here, and effectively I have gone through and put these numbers next to each of these fixtures, right? So the purpose of this exercise is just really, uh, okay, 
what we're trying to do is say, well, how big do all these waste pipes need to be that this table here gave us all the sizes? Okay. What we need to know is the capacity of the final waste pipe to carry all that water. Okay. So we get a total, each one of these fixtures has a particular discharge unit, okay, or value, so four, one, four. And if we add, somebody add all these up, please. But nevertheless, <coughs> what we find is, and it's not on this particular, we will, there is a, another table, which we do have from the chart, which will give you this, and it will say that your outlet uh, size will need to be 100 mils, and with a maximum four, or minimum four, sorry, a one and six. Okay? And that will carry 24 fixture units, discharge units. So we'll show you the table where you pull that information from. So that makes sense? So you get a total, you just add them all up. Mm -hmm. Think of all your mates that became climbers at school, after school. When they left school, they didn't all get very, very good at maths all of a sudden, right? This is simple stuff. You just add them up and you get a figure, and that figure needs to be within the scope of this particular answer from another, another table. Okay, so venting. Venting is, um, if you see in this, you see all these green lines, they're coming from the various fixtures and they go to a common vent. So obviously if you're designing something that's got a roof space, this is really, really easy to do. But if you're designing something with a uh, sark ceiling or a skillion roof, then you really need to allow for all this. You need to have that in mind as a designer. Otherwise someone's going to stick in places you can see them. So the vents in this particular layout, so all these vent pipes are dealing with um, these sewer fixtures. Now, we'll just carry on. We'll come back to the venting because it's, it's a little bit more complex. So traps, obviously, that's the trap. Okay. So, again, this, this might end up to be sort of karaoke. There's rules about how far that trap can, should be below the fixture, and there's rules about how far you can put that beyond the fixture, and you can't put that in another room. Okay? So there's, um, that's generally what the rules come about, and they say everything's got to be an absolute minimum of 25. In New Zealand, oh sorry, the 25 millimeter water seal. So, a friend of mine walked into a hotel once, and they said, what is the smell? And they discovered that whoever had installed this trap had laid it horizontally. Okay? So the water oh, seal. Shit. And so, so they said, we're not going to stay in this hotel for a week smelling all that shit. And uh, they actually fixed it themselves. So, um, so that's the So, again, we're talking about location in terms of proximity to the actual fixture. So, not exceeding 1.2 uh, meters from the fixture. So, that's where the trap has to be. So, there's a lots, lots of little rules that, uh, that need to apply. Again, You'll, have, you'll be able to access all these notes. So I do, if you do get the chance, take an hour to read through it all. I'm not going to read all this today. So access for cleaning. All right, most of these fixtures here will have a point that you can open them up. All right, so if that's sitting on the outside of your building, that's really easy to do. If it's sitting inside the building, it's really hard to get it. So what you need to do is bear in mind, again, as a designer, if you've got a, a shaft that carries all your pipe work, where do you access it? Otherwise, somebody's going to go, oh, we think something's blocked. So let's go and destroy half the wall to find out. Okay? So make provision for maintenance is really the moral I think it's just thing. important. So, um, we'll look at this in a bit more depth. But effectively, this is uh, a diagram that you'll be expected to complete, not quite like this, in your exam. So we'll, I'll just run through this. This diagram is not that great. And I'll use one of Max's lectures to show you a better diagram. But effectively, what you'll end up doing is sizing all your wastes, the outlets, and the stack sizes, and that creates a plumbing and drainage diagram. So we'll move through to that and go through that quite quickly, like I said. Um, and that constitutes that particular part of the, uh, the lecture. 
So that's a brief introduction, and like I said, we'll just cover this in a little bit more detail. I can navigate my way around. So, so this is again, we'll be backing, backing over a few things. Uh, so if you look at your overall building services and whatnot, you're looking at trail drainage and sanitation primarily. These are other parts where, uh, you know, different parts of your service, domestic hot water, we've covered that. I think somebody else is covering car with you guys. So all those sorts of things. We'll just run through. So similar sort of thing, we'll just, this is what we've been introduction. This is a bit of a double up. Again, we talked about discharging it. That's, three litres. that's its definition. So 3.79 litres per minute. Okay. Uh, and these in red are your fixtures. Okay, and your pipe work. And again, discharge units. So it's a little double up coming up over here. In New Zealand, we can use a 32 mm pipe. Generally, it doesn't fit the Australian system. You'll find 40 mm pipe is your minimum. And your water closets mm. are using 80 mm pipe. That's where all the poos and the wheeze and the water goes down. Okay, the same diagram again. And how many discharge units are located in the building? Uh, and if you look at this, this house, it's a big house, three toilets, three basins, shower, one over the tub, shower, store, laundry tub, clothes washing, sink, all these things. Okay, and we're looking at the discharge units that apply to that. Okay? So it's pure multiplication, addition. So many discharge units, more discharge units, right? Simple maths, anybody confused on that? Okay. It's a relief. It's a relief. Like I said, an, an architect or a designer doesn't need to be brilliant at physics, it doesn't need to be brilliant at chemistry, like most people believe, we don't have to be brilliant at maths. But you've got to be good enough, all right? If you said NCA level one, if you got a, achieved, I would be concerned. If you've got an excellent power year, you'll be all right. Okay, so that's the level of maths you need to engage at. It's a basic level, but you've got to be good at most of it. So areas, volumes, all those sorts of basic things. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, soil fixture. So again, some more definitions. Okay, soil fixtures versus wastewater fixture. Right, soil fixture is stuff that what we call black water. You might say so it's toilets, um, b days sometimes and uh, also urinals and things like that, right? So here, sanitary fixture or appliance used to receive waste, which is not a soil fixture, okay? It's not carrying solid waste, like poos. Right, so you've got wastewater fixtures and soil fixtures directly into the train. So again, just note this, through gully traps, that's the news, old New Zealand system. Unfortunately, you need to know that there's two systems running alongside each other. The Australian system doesn't necessarily use a gully trap. The problem with the gully trap is there's some limitations about how many fixtures can go into it, and it's generally three. Okay, so if you've got six fixtures, you have two gully traps. So outside your house, you might see something got three pipes that go into a plastic thing, old-fashioned ones, concrete. Got three pipes, and every time somebody lets the sink down, they go and rush the water into it. That's your gully trap. All right. If something blocks up in the pipe, sometimes that overflows. You get all sorts of things you didn't know went down the sink coming up. Right? So that's your gully trap. So, uh, principle of the operation, obviously, gravity. Alright? Somebody said a drain layer has to remember two things. Ship goes downhill and pay back on Thursday. Alright? Um, if they say this is minimum form, be absolutely suspicious that it will work. Alright? Um, and truly, we have drain layers that do believe some things go uphill. And if the drainage on a site or a job is faulty, you're in trouble for the rest of your life. Why? Because it will haunt that building forever. Right? And you will not be able to fix it, because you can fix it, but it's incredibly expensive to do so. So what people end up doing is just maintaining it, clear it again, clear it again, and things like that. So get it right, avoid 90 degree bends, balance pressures, that sort of information. Again, so this is a bit of an introduction type thing again. We looked at that discharge unit, so we talked about where we get that information from. Okay, 
this is the amount of discharge, oops, training, discharge unit loading and minimum gradients. So if you look at the total discharge units, so our, what was our previous building? One had 34. So we are just in the minimum gradient of one in one hundred. Okay, this is in what they call the grey area. So if it's within that shaded area, then you really need to get a laser on it and make sure the fall is right. Okay, because one in one hundred fall. Imagine a pipe a hundred meters long that drops one meter over that one hundred meter length. Okay. Now, if you have solids in that paper. Toilets, shouldn't say sanitary pads, they go down there too. That system may not cope. Right? So the minimum fall over that distance, that's why we're checking how much is discharging into it, how many discharge units will that uh, accommodate, and an 80, meter, uh, 80 millimeter pipe, right. you might say, well, actually, we should go up to, because we're right on the limit, perhaps we should go to 100, which is three times the capacity. Okay, it's not twice the size, but funnily enough, it's three times the size. So you're looking at that, and as a designer, you go, oh, we could get away with 100. It's right on the limit, though, for that particular house. Let's tell you what, let's just do 100, and we're well with that. But the falls, you see, you keep up. so the capacity of the pipe is so much better, you know it absolutely falls within it, but the fall there, you go, gosh, if we could get a 1 in 80 gradient, that would be better. Or if we could get into here at 160, that would be better. Okay. We did a job once, and um, we had issues because we didn't want a sewer pump. We had a building that was here. We had a um, that was the outlet. There was the sewer that we could we thought we could go into. There was about a half a meter difference in height, 200 meters away. There was a sewer. Down there. In the end, we disregarded that or we ran this all the way to there. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the ground level was like this uh, in between there. So, this trench was massive to get that fall all the way through. 300 meter run. Only uh, one. Is it fantastic? No. It was minimum fall. We had to laser it every single step of the way. And what happens is because the plumber installed something a bit tricky with, a, with an extra bend in there, there's one point that always backs up. Once it gets to the pipe, this works. Before it gets to the pipe, there's problems on that particular job. But you can imagine, because we couldn't go uphill, clearly. Because no. this is where the closest sewer line, because the site had a big lump in it. There was a sewer sitting there, which other buildings were feeding into. We thought, oh, that would be close enough. No, that was 500 mils higher from that point. So obviously we had to go find that, or we had the other option we'd have to put a pump and pump it. The problem with the pump is that the power packs up, nothing works. Good shit. Okay. So the inline pumps is something we're not covering, but just be aware 